Aloha, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Trauma Recovery University. I'm your host, Athena Mobrick, and my amazing co-host, Bobby Parrish, is in the green room, and she's pulling up our live hashtag, our live Q&A feed, so that we can start saying hi to some people, and if you are tuning in live on Monday, the 20th of July, you can go to Twitter and find the hashtag no more shame and you can follow along, ask questions and interact with us. This is a live interactive broadcast and this week's topic is your choice of reporting your abuse and pressing charges against your abuser or not. It is always your choice and um, that is what we are going to be discussing tonight and just want to do a couple of housekeeping items and general announcements. If you are tuning in on a podcast platform, we want to welcome you especially. If you're tuning in from iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, or iHeartRadio, and if you are tuning in on Roku TV, we love you guys. Please rate our channel and tell us your honest feedback. If you're tuning in on YouTube, thank you so much to all of our new YouTube subscribers. We have almost, I don't even know, but we have a lot more subscribers this week than we've had ever. So thank you so much. If you like us and you like what we're doing, please like our channel so that we can continue to do these resources for free. And um, so let's see. Uh, tonight's topic, choosing to press charges against your abuser when you are an adult survivor of childhood sexual abuse. How do you do that? How do you navigate through that? And what do we recommend if you are making these choices to report your abuse? So. Um, without further ado, I am going to turn this over to Bobby Parrish, and we are going to have a very lively discussion on choosing to report your abuse and press charges against your childhood abuser. Is this a choice that you want to make? And if you are going to make this choice, what is it that we recommend? So uh, I feel like I forgot something, Bobby, but um, take it away and fill in the piece. <laughs> fill in the blanks. <laughs> sure. Yes, yes. Fill in the blanks. Um, a couple of things that we want to talk about first, and because they're just so exciting. Uh, as a reminder, August 27th is our first birthday, the first birthday of Trauma Recovery University. Yay, confetti. Yay. Um, and <laughs> to celebrate that, we are going to be doing a live virtual event on August 29th. Um, focusing on narcissism and other uh, cluster B personality disorder predators like psychopaths and sociopaths. We're going to talk about what it's like to live in an, abuse, an abusive situation with one of them, um, how to recover from an abusive relationship with one, and how to identify and avoid them future. Just this week, I wrote a piece for RachelInTheOC.com about um, how living in a chaotic, dysfunctional childhood is desensitizes us to um, violence and being treated. And so we have a really low um, meter for what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. I mean, we accept a whole lot that we can accept, whereas people who were born in, raised in healthy situations have a much higher level, um, and when someone treats them badly, they say, oh yeah, oh thanks, I'm out of here, whereas for those of us that were raised in chaotic dysfunctions, we're like, oh, well, at least he's not hitting me, or, um, you know, at least he only yells once in a while, or at least she takes all the money and spends it and leaves me home alone broke. Um, and we really reset our tolerance meter and learn to desensitize ourselves, to desensitize ourselves, there we go, backwards, to sensitize ourselves to being treated badly and what that looks like. So we're going to be talking about that, taking it apart, unpacking it, everything in depth on the 29th of August. I keep looking at my calendar. That's what I'm doing here. Um, so make sure you're on our email list. Go over to the website, traumarecoveryuniversity.com, nomoreshameproject.com, and sign up for our email list so you're there and you're ready and you'll get all the notifications. 
Something else that's really important that we want you to know now, it is the 20th of July. I know a lot of people watch the tapes of these afterwards. Right now we're live. It's the 20th of July. On September 1st, Trauma University becomes a um, paid institution. So if you are on our mailing list before September 1st, 2015, you will never have to pay a penny I'm a student at Trauma Recovery University. You might have to pay to take a course or buy a book, but you'll get a discount because you are a charter member. However, and you have for those free people tuition. free tuition yes. forever. <laughs> For those who sign up and don't come along until after that, the fee is $14.99 to belong to Trauma Recovery University per month because Athena and I love what we do and we want to keep doing what we do it and we'd also like to eat at the same So we have put a lot of time and energy into developing the program and after a year of doing it for free and donating probably pretty close to forty thousand dollars of our own money to make it work um, we've decided that we deserve to have a little bit of remuneration for it so starting September 2015 there will be a fee of fourteen ninety nine a month to access taped um, episodes of Trauma Recovery University two. Season one will always be free. It'll always be up on YouTube. It'll always be on Roku TV. And if you want to watch this live, you can always watch it live for free. But the taped episodes will be behind the paywall. The downloadable one-page resources will be behind the paywall. So if you want to have access to those, you're going to have to subscribe. And then those who are members will get um, discounts to our online courses, our books, everything that Athena and I do that has a fee associated with it, all of you members will get a discount. And all of you who are on the email list now, make sure to get all your friends, tell all your survivor friends to sign up now. You will all be charter members. You'll never be charged that $14.99 a month. So, Make sure you're on the email list and go over to TraumaRecoveryUniversity.com and put your name on the email list so they can be a founding member who never gets charged a monthly fee. Yay! Um, yay! <laughs> I, think, um, I think I also wanted to remind everyone of the good news that we do have an opportunity placed before us where we have some very generous, awesome people that want to help us become a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And if that is the case, then we will be doing a lot of fundraising and looking for donations, and they will all be tax deductible. So if you believe in the power of prayer, we do ask for your fervent and wholehearted prayers in that direction, as it is something that we've been considering for quite some time. So. Okay. Um, now, if you're new, don't know yet the whole scheme of how we do things. We have uh, three Twitters every week. The first one is Monday at noon my time, so 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and that's 6 p.m. in the UK. That is mainly geared towards our UK audience, but we do have a lot of. Um, people and from other countries. And then we have this Twitter chat slash video cast on Monday night. Then on Tuesday evening is the original Twitter chat that started everything in January of 2014. And that's at 6 p.m. Pacific and 2 a.m. Wednesday mornings for you stalwart people living in the UK and beyond who are up in the middle of the night. This morning we had, and all of these have the same topic. Um, and our topic every, every, this week is, yeah. yes, every week, not the same topic forever and ever. We don't beat the horse to death. No, the same topic <laughs> every week. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something, same topic for our whole lives? Woo, we'd all get bored. Um, and so, now, if you're listening on a podcast, you're missing out on the fact that Athena and I talk with our hands big time. So, 
if you want to get a chance to uh, enjoy that, then um, hop on over to YouTube or Roku TV and watch one of our videos. So the chat this morning, we talked about this topic, choosing to um, press charges or not against our abuser. And I think it was hammered home for all of us more than anything, just what a difficult decision that is and how it is fraught with emotion and very, very personal with some pressure coming from um, perhaps our abuser and their family versus um, our own families. And then, of course, you have the whole stigma of society. And then there were many people who talked about the fact that they did report they weren't believed. And yeah. so then comes a whole new wave of shame and judgment. And of course, if you're going to report and not be believed, why in the world would you try ever again? Um, and we even had an email from someone Ooh, who, wanted that us, that. Yeah, who wanted us to make sure and talk about some specifics tonight. So um, we'll get into that. We're not going to miss that. Um, but. I just want to make sure that everyone knows that we understand how emotionally difficult a decision is. And we're not here to give legal advice. Absolutely, positively, not here to give legal advice. We're here to give you some things to think about while you're making this decision. Maybe some factors or some considerations you haven't already made. And more than anything, and I really want all of you to hear this. More than anything, we want you to hear that this is your choice. You, the victim, the survivor, your choice. It is not your parents' choice. It is not your siblings' choice. It is not society's choice. It is not that police detective's choice. It is no one's choice but yours. And whatever you choose should be respected. Maybe it won't be, but it should. So know that we support you, whatever it is that you choose to do. Um, and we understand. Uh, Athena and I have both chased our own tail on this issue several times, and we'll talk about that a little bit as we go through the broadcast in terms of what our decision-making process was. But just more than anything, there's no right or wrong decision. There's just not. Um, I know sometimes people bless, well, you have an obligation to report it because what if that abuser goes out and abuses somebody else? It would be, it, it would be your fault. You'd have to carry that on your shoulders. Well, pardon my French, but bullshit. You are not responsible for your abuser's behavior. You weren't responsible when you were a child. You're not responsible now. So, um, I f obviously, I feel kind of strongly about that one, but I just yeah. want to make sure that you're not carrying around that burden. Um, I've heard that. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that, and each time it irritates me because that's victim blaming. That's making you responsible for your abuser's behavior, and that's just crap. So, um <laughs> <laughs> Athena, jump in here. How did this morning go for you? You know, just as a reminder, I'm in Dallas. Athena's in Maui. So um, we aren't together when we do these things. So sometimes this podcast tonight is the first chance we get to um, check in with each other and see how things went for the other one during chat. How things go for you this morning? Yeah. Um, well, I was, I was so happy to... Um, I was so happy to see so many people have different questions and want to participate and have an opinion. Uh, there's nothing that is more discouraging for me personally than to see people um, just not really have an opinion and just to allow apathy to take over in their lives. So um, it was wonderful to see, first of all, that everyone had an opinion and that everybody was inquisitive and had questions. It was a chat was a little triggering for me just because as you, you and I, you and I have talked a lot since we're business partners, but um, it is, it is uh, very frustrating to think back on how many times I tried to report my abuse to the authorities. And even though they were there, they were live, they were like right there next to me, they could see, um, 
the environment I was living in, they just believed my narcissistic family that I was just making things up or I was just being a kid or, or whatever it is that they decided to believe. And so that part was, um, was very, very difficult for me. And I, I mean, I have gone back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth personally wanting to report and find some sort of not, I don't know about restitution, Maybe that is what I wanted. I don't know what I wanted for, for so, so long. I'm not really sure. That's something in my eye, you guys. Sorry. Um, but seeing everyone being so inquisitive and um, conversing back and forth with everyone was very encouraging for me. And I also um, have to commend every single person that showed up today and shared their truth. And... Um, specifically, we have a, a gal that is a member of our community that most recently went and she reported her abuse. And um, even though he, it, the person that abused her has already passed away, um, she just wanted it to be known. She wanted to make sure that she reported what it was that happened. And I'm, I'm grateful for the bravery and the courage that our survivor community possesses and encourages others to do. You know that Bobby and I talk all the time about walking our talk and making sure that we live up to the things that we share with you guys that we suggest that you um, consider or do. We always support you in whatever decisions that you decide to make, but we do want to walk our talk. So we both did a lot of research on this topic and wanted to be a wealth of information for you. And I also had some messages that were sent to me, several messages that were sent to me on private Facebook message and then an email that I received. And I also got a voicemail on my speak, uh, speak pipe, speaker pipe, speak pipe app, my, my widget that I have on my website at athenamoberg.com. So there you go, go widget, widget. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm like, what, what is it? I don't is know why widget? I like that word, widget. Is it a plug-in? Is it a plug-in? Is it a widget? Okay, so um, one of them, um, I, I conversed back and forth with several people. I returned the voicemail to the one person, and then I promised that I would pose this communication to our survivor community during our broadcast because they really wanted to weigh in and ask questions and be present for chat this morning but they were unable to because they had an appointment. And so I'm going to be the voice for this person that couldn't use their voice this morning, and I'm going to read this to our community, and we could start off our conversation. And we do have plenty of time here. Um, we have 40 minutes left of this broadcast. So I uh, just want to start it off with this. So this person is remaining anonymous. Hello, Athena, how are you? I just wanted to say that I'm going to miss our live Twitter chat at today as I actually will be in my counseling session. But I really wanted to be involved with this chat as it is a hard choice and I don't know if I should make myself, a hard choice that I don't know if I should make myself and I wanted to know others' points of view. But I will catch up on the chat when I get home from my counseling appointment. And she came home and then she read all of the Storify transcripts that Bobby labors over because Storify sometimes is not our friend. <laughs> no, Storify's not, not been friend lately. No, Storify is not intuitive. <laughs> so here we go, guys. This is her response after she read the Storify transcript. So she says, I'm wondering if you could ask the questions for me tonight, uh, please, if people find it hard to press charges against their own dad especially if he denies the whole thing. I just don't know if I could have the strength for a court case or emotionally go through with what happens if I don't have enough evidence, etc., and he just gets away with it. Just my word against his. Just so much goes through your head about this subject. Am I wrong to press charges against my dad? Will the rest of the family hate me for doing that? Can I put them through it? Sorry, just a huge topic to talk about, but I'm very grateful if you could just say one of these questions tonight. And then it's a sign from this person. So first, I just wanted to say thank you for being brave enough 
for posing this question and for opening the topic of discussion because as you know this is so passionate for Bobby and I we always want to open up this community and speak about issues that are not often talked about secondly I think the more important question that I would like to ask personally besides is it right or is it wrong and will your family hate you is what do you want what do you need for your own recovery journey and the message that you sent with um, what if he just gets away with it that is a tough one you guys there is probably okay so in all of this research that Bobby and I did like because we told you we research these things exhaustively sometimes and sometimes we do light research but this one we both sort of did a lot of separate research and then came together with what we found so and Bobby has an excellent resource for us uh, before the end of today's broadcast so what I wanted to, to let you know is uh, one of the statistics from rain.org that I found is every 10 seconds there is a child that is abused in the United States for every 100 cases of child abuse that is reported there are actually I believe it's 26 that go to trial and only five warrant criminal charges against the abuser that's five out of a hundred five percent wait what does what does that mean warrant criminal charges does that mean that's, they're found guilty yes that means that they had charges that were awarded five percent so so five percent were found guilty 95 percent well either they, only 20 the charges were dropped or yes um, or maybe wow. it was five maybe five actually go to court I need to I need see I hate it when I do things off of memory but then I didn't want to sit here and like read the whole website so maybe we'll <laughs> link this I know, right <laughs> so maybe we'll link this up in the show notes to you guys but I wanted you to know that so every every 10 seconds and this isn't even global this is just in the United States alone. Every 10 seconds there is a, a child abuse, a child that is abused that is reported. And that's yeah. reported. Reported. Right. It doesn't count the ones that aren't reported. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mine yeah. aren't reported. Yeah. Well, it, mine yours weren't. were, but they didn't. But the whole Listen. reason the cops were at the house were not because I was being abused. That's the whole point. The cops were at the house because there were drugs, there was alcohol, there was violence. My mom was getting beat up and bloodied and bludgeoned and bleeding and throwing things across the room. And the neighbors were sick of hearing the noise and, and dealing with the drama. Like, they literally were not there because I was being abused. Like, no. anyway. So, I mean, I don't want to make this about me. This is so not about me. No. I just want you guys to know. Like, seriously, not about me. But what I want you to know, guys, is for every 10 seconds there is a child that is abused and it's reported so do the math and yeah and out of every 100 child abuse cases that is reported 26 actually I want to say 26 go to court and only five are found guilty Wow no wonder people are um they bulk at uh, reporting yeah. um, abuse. Uh, that make I know I know the number is I didn't know that every ten every ten minutes or every ten every, seconds. Every ten seconds. It was okay. on the Rain website during the research right. that I was doing the statute of limitations on the different states or the different counties right. or whatever. Right. I know that there are three million reports of abuse every year in the United States that involve six million children because some of those reports involve more than one child so like more children in a house are being abused yeah. um, and the numbers they're just staggering and we did have some people this morning who talked about how they had successfully brought charges against their abuser and um, one wonderful woman and I won't use her name because I didn't ask if I could um, who brought charges against multiple abusers and they are all now serving time in prison and Yay! Um, now that's yeah. confetti that's confetti right yes. there right um, but fortunately for 
I think even more people taught having reported and either not being believed by the police um, or not taken seriously. Several cases were reported to CPS and um, they were not taken seriously. The, the case was dismissed. Um, you know, children in their active imaginations. Um, one woman even talked about how when she went to report her case to the police, the police said it couldn't be true because she was too calm and composed. How's that? Wow. Um, so that just, I understand. That's heartbreaking and angering. That made me so angry when I saw that because I think her, her follow-up comment to that was being an advocate didn't didn't do me it worked it did, against she it, worked it worked against, against her it did me a disservice at this point where like us as advocates you guys I mean we we do tend to um, succinctly describe things and not overreact and get emotional because we're detached or we disassociate when we talk about things that are very triggering just as a coping strategy but urgh, it made me so angry my mama bear was just all up in that oh my goodness but see, that's victim blaming. Yes. That's saying, oh, it could simply be true because you're calm and composed. Um, reminds me of when I would go into my psychiatrist and how terribly depressed I was. And he'd say, well, your clothes are clean and your hair is washed, so you must not be too depressed. Really? Yeah. Wow. So. <laughs> and then what yeah. about our other, oh, by the way, I wanted to say hi to Lady Bird because um, she is not here quite often, but she's live right now. So, hi, Lady Bird. Thank you so much for showing yes. up. up at 2 o'clock <laughs> in the morning there, ma'am. And then um, Susan, um, can't, Susan's on a tea break, so she can't watch. So, um, But she did send in a tweet, and then I all, always, always am grateful to see Matt and Melissa and Jack. And um, I think Simi's probably around there somewhere. And hello to Yellow Nehru. Um, we love you guys, and um, we're always so grateful that you're here. Um, and um, please, this is a live Q&A every single Monday, so send in your questions. But um, I wanted to mention that there was someone that mentioned this morning that they were also told that when they, first of all, one person mentioned that they were forced to report and that that was extremely yeah. traumatizing for them. They were forced to report, and I'm just I'm very against that. Oh my gosh! And then yeah, that, mandatory that, reporting. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Because they don't the people that are making you making your report, they're not the ones that have to live in the same house with you and your abuser. Because guess what? You don't always get removed from the home. <laughs> I know I didn't. Right. Um, right. And then there was another person that said that they weren't behaving the way children behave that are actually uh. abused. And that was so triggering for me because you guys, oh my goodness gracious. So when I do all this research and I'm looking into all of this stuff for you guys, I'm looking and it says that some warning signs that children might be being abused are that they're detached or their grades are slipping or they're pulling away from their friends or they're silent or they're, you know, they're slacking in their studies and all of this. Uh, guess what? Yeah, I friggin' never did any of that. I was a perfectionist. I had to be perfect, 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 perfect all the time. Right. There was none, right. there was none of that like slacking and, oh, I better just be silent and be the quiet, mysterious type. No, I mean, I was on this treadmill. I needed to just be better, 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 more, 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 better. I was told from the time I was little that if I didn't look perfect and act perfect and talk perfect and be perfect, I would get the shit beat out of me. So hello, what makes you think that I'm going to let my grades slip to make it yeah. worse? Are you kidding me? Exactly. So since I was an overachiever, oh, so they're saying that they're basically saying, oh, I'm fired up. Oh, watch out on this one, guys. So what I'm, what they're basically saying is that overachievers are never child abuse victims, that they're never, ever, ever experiencing abuse in the home because they're overachievers. Really? Really? Mm. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> well, wow. I think the lesson, the, right. And the lesson we need to take from, from is that there is no standard, typical uh, child presentation. I've met just as many um, children being abused who were, quote unquote, acting out because of what was happening to them, as I have met children who quiet and striving for perfection. 
because of what was happening to them at home. So those standardized lists, um, I know why they make them. They make them to share with people so that hopefully they can identify the children, but it's just one way. And it shouldn't be, that then should not negate every child who does that pattern from possibly being um, a survivor of abuse. And it really should never, ever, ever be used against a child. Okay, so 57 hallmark signs, therefore you're not being abused. Yeah, no, that's not right. Um, and one point I want to make, and I had I read this a little bit earlier, when you read that um, message that you got from that individual that wanted to talk about should she or he file charges against her father, she made the statement. She asked the question, "Is it right?" Yes. And yes, it's right. Um, if your father abused you, it's right to press. It's, Nobody can tell you it's wrong, um, but you still get to choose. It can be right, and you can still say, I don't think I'm going to get any benefit out of this, and I choose not to. So it's never wrong, never, ever, ever wrong to press charges against someone who has abused you, whether it's child domestic violence, um, you know, a cyber bully, never wrong. Um, but just because it's right doesn't mean you have to do it. So yeah, it's always it's your, your choice. choice. You guys. Always. Bobby and I are always, 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 always telling you guys over and over, we don't want to make these decisions for you. And we, we never want other people making these decisions for you either. We want to make yep. sure you know that the choice to participate in your recovery, however that may look, is your choice. Now, we can share with you our best practices and the things that we have done that have helped us in our recovery journey from the time we started having memories of our child abuse and the things that have helped us along the way, the advocacy work that we're doing, the coaching that we're doing, the private secret Facebook groups, the Twitter chats, these live stream Q&A sessions, the paid membership program coming up, the online courses, the books, the ebooks, the downloadable research. We can share all of that with you. But we will never, ever, ever say, you should, except for when we say you should practice excellent self-care and make yourself a priority. You should always do that. You should always be safe and make yourself a priority. And this, your safety and the safety of your children, if there are young children involved, is always paramount. So those are the only shoulds that we will ever give you. Otherwise, it is always up to you, and we support you in your decision 100%. This is a non-judgmental community. We will share our faith, our opinions, what it is that we are doing, our best practices, but we are never going to should you all over the place. You've had enough of that your entire life, I'm guessing. Yes. Quota been filled. Thank you. Yeah. Move on, please. <laughs> yes, let's move along. Yeah. No more <laughs> shitting all over the place. No more should shooting. No, no, no. Should. <laughs> um, <laughs> really quick, I want to share this before we get into the one page. Uh, one of the things that people need to know when they're making the choice whether or not file charges is what are the charges, is the abuse with statute of limitations. Um, statute of limitations is not a federal issue. It is a state's right to set, e set up each statute of limitations for child abuse. So you should go in and check and see some states it's, if you were abused as a child, 18 years is old is the cutoff and that's it. There's, you know, you have so many years from the time you first start having memories. It just depends. Um, and RAIN has an excellent resource. So if you are looking for that resource, go to RAIN.org, R-A-I-N-N.org, and click on their public policy tab. Let's see. Policy. Way at the very end, it's the tab on the website on the upper right corner, and it says Law in Your State. And if you go there, you'll see a picture 
show you. Ooh, are you going to screen share all fancy? I am screen share. Let's look at this puppy together. Okay. Here we are. This is um, this is Rain's website, and here we are. It talks about laws in your state, and it talks about the laws in terms of de defining sex violence, mandatory reporting. Mandatory reporting means that um, different, different, different. Um, <laughs> Different occupations in different states have what is called a mandatory reporting law. For example, as a therapist, I am a mandatory reporter, which means if I have a report made to me of child abuse, I must legally contact Child Protective Services and let them know. If I don't, I can be held criminally liable. Teachers are mandatory reporters. Um, in most states, clergy are mandatory reporters. Doctors, nurses, all mandatory reporters. So you can see that. Confidentiality laws, HIV, AIDS testing of sex offenders, statute of limitations. You see that right there? Statute of limitations. So I live in Texas. If I click on Texas, it will break it down. Mandatory reporting, confidentiality, HIV AIDS, criminal statutes of limitations. And it will tell you, now this is interesting, if there was continuous sexual abuse of a young child or children, there's no statute of limitations. Ha. In Texas. In Texas. Yes, in Texas. Now, Can you click on California? I am so sorry. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. I am so sorry to our people who live outside the United States. I wish I could tell you where I knew you could go to find this information in your country. I do not know. Um, California, let's see here. Criminal statute of limitations. Athena, are you still seeing everything as I click? I am, I am, I am. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, if the victim is under 18 at the time of the commission of the offense, oh, any time before victim's 40th birthday. Bummer. Otherwise, prosecution must bring a case against the perpetrator within 10 years after the commission of the offense. Mm. Um, it looks like they are doing it here by the, the different oh, type of crime. Unlawful... Oh. Sexual intercourse with a minor. Oh, it's a misdemeanor. Shame on them. Are you serious? Figures, California. Yeah, I think this is. Yeah, I think this is more of a. This is more of a statutory rape situation because it said if a victim is not more than three years older or three years younger than an offender. So this okay. is more of a. Page uh, down. Rape. Page down. What shall I look for? Um. Here we go. Actual assault of a child? Yes. There you go. Okay. Ten years. Ten years after commission of the offense. Incest, ten years after commission of the offense. Bummer. Lewd and lascivious acts. Uh, same back to the 18 and before go down, 40. Go down to oral. Oral copulation. Go down there. Same thing. If you were under 18, it has to be before they're 40. You're 40. Whoops, sorry. They're 40. It's a slip of the tongue. Harmful matters. Um, oh, here, contact with yeah. us. Continuous. Oh, here you um, go. Continuous sexual abuse of a child. What does that say? Same thing. If it occurred when they were under 18, then you have until your 40th birthday. Hmm. I guess I should have looked this up sooner. One, you one know, and a, it one is, and a half years sooner. I'm shooting myself all over the place, you guys. That's okay. Um, it's just you know we're we're not gonna we're not gonna pretend this is easy. This isn't easy, and it's not simple. Um, it's a difficult area to navigate, 
especially if your family is already if it occurred within your family and your family is already very unhappy with you because you are not staying the silent meek person that they wanted someone in chat this morning said made that comment she said her family told her that it, it was against their culture their family culture for her to press any charge to her abuser and that they wanted her to stay quiet and silent and she said that meant she shouldn't have started that blog that she did or uh, spoken up in public or um, went to a few speaking engagements and spoken about her abuse so um, if your family is against this um, charges it's just it's not an easy road um, and so I think you really do have to sit down and think about what are the costs that I might pay and what are the benefits that I could get um, let's go ahead and look at the one page because it has different things to consider as you are trying to decide and first I have to get my hey I wanted to give a shout out to Donald Cribs um, he hey, is Donald. here live with us <laughs> and Maya as well hello Maya the beautiful Maya um, uh, oh Matt is saying peace out peace out Matt we love you uh, oh and he is in Florida he is baking right now he wants it to be cold. Uh -huh. it's very very hot so um, so yeah he's he's gonna he'll be he'll see us another time um, okay. and um, what was I gonna tell you oh gosh I had something to say about what you were just saying there a moment ago and I completely I'm sorry. my psychic powers are failing me oh and Tiffany Frank is here hello Tiffany Frank hi Tiffany Tiffany is newer to our community we're so excited that you're here yes and candy can um, candy can is here or, or maybe it's candy cane and I'm saying it wrong but I think it says no. candy can and she's she's not able to see she's us but, another, huh? she's another UK or up in the middle of the night yes yes I think she can't see us but she is tweeting back and forth um, with us here yay yeah you guys this is a tough tough topic and I hope I touched um, sufficiently on the emails that I had received from that one person that wanted me to talk about this stuff there was one particular question that said will my family hate me or will they be mad at me and I would like to encourage you in any way that I possibly can by responding to that um, with what what I've experienced with anything that I've tried to speak up about and that is that most of my family doesn't want to hear anything that I have to say and it has little to do with anything it, it, I could literally have you know uh, I could have evidence of everything and they wouldn't really want to hear it because it's never ever ever about doing what's right or supporting or anything like that it's always about them and it's always about making sure that they are good and that um, whatever they want is paid attention to and it, it has very little to do with doing what is right or having the having a relationship so um, I'm not I don't want to um, discourage you in reporting if you are wanting to report but I also want to let you know that chances are you are not going to have your family's support and then perhaps you need to ask yourself or you could I want to encourage you to ask yourself if you have ever had their support and um, perhaps reaching out to people that are unconditionally loving and supportive of you um, like your like your family I, yeah and if they've never been supportive of you what do you have to lose Correct. You know, as another side of the coin. But again, it's completely your choice. And I don't think that you will be able to really decide in a moment. Um, and I really would encourage you to sit down with a group 
of people, safe, supportive people, and, and talk it through. That's one of the things that we're going to talk about, one of the suggestions we make here on the one page. Um, and I love that <laughs> Athena put your choice in red and underlined it here on the one page because that is what we have been talking about all night and what we will always continue to talk about are your choices. Like yes. Athena said, there are very few things that we will stand up and say, you must do this. Very few. So if you hear us say it, that's something to pay attention to. Most of the time we're going to say this is your choice. We'll talk out options with you and things to consider, but it is your choice and we will support you. Um, and Again, it is, it is so hard, it's so complex, it's not a matter of, oh, okay, yeah, or, well, no, I don't think so. There's Everybody wants to have their opinion, there's societal stigma, there's victim blaming, um, the reporting process is not easy, and then what happens if you decide to press charges and the person's not found guilty? Um, I have sat with victims before that have gone all the way through the court process, testified, been deposed, gone through all of that, and then their abuser was found not guilty. And it's, it's hard. It doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, and the people I sat with did not regret their decision. But it does definitely um, sometimes give us pause and something to think about. Um, Again, every survivor has the right to decide for themselves whether or not to press charges against their abuser. And the only time that input from other parties is important is when the victim is a minor or they're incapacitated. Um, and I know it's so hard when the victim is a child and you're trying to um, discern their opinion or, or their strength to go through the reporting process. Um, Rachel Thompson, who started Sex Abuse Chat, the Tuesday night original chat, uh, with me on um, back in January of 2014, testified in two trials against her abuser when she was, I believe, 12 years old. And she writes about it um, very freely, speaks of it very freely. And um, she has always talked about how it was worth it for her. And she was glad that her parents supported her decision. But um, it's just, it's so hard when there's a minor involved. And again, this is an excellent time for you to get support from people who have that child's best interest at heart. Therapist, um, clergy people, if you belong to a church, you know, um, family members, the education system, whoever it is that you think can help support this child as they go through that process. Okay, the first thing to consider if you're ever faced with deciding whether or not to press charges against your abuser, here are some factors that are and the first one, is it even possible for you to press charges? Check the criminal code statute of limitations for your jurisdiction. They vary state by state, and they can be confusing. Oh, of course they're confusing. We just pulled up and looked at California, and there were at least four or five different statutes of limitations, depending upon what was the criminal class of the offense. Too bad I'm not so, under 40. I've never wished I was under 40 more than I do right now. Or maybe not. I mean, everything happens for a reason, you guys, but still. Yeah. Look it up. Yeah. Look it up. It, it varies state yeah. by state by state. And we support right. you no matter what. So go to Rain's website. Look under their public policy and look up for your state. And I believe it would be the state that you were living in when you were abused, not the state you live in now. Um, so the next thing to consider is, do you want to press charges? You're the only one who can make that choice for you. And anyone, and I really want you to hear this, anyone who is pressuring you, either way, that's a red flag for someone that perhaps you should not their opinion much weight. 
okay it's okay for someone to say you know what I really think we need to think about this and these are the things I really think that you need to think about that's fine but when someone comes at you and says you know what no you should not do that look at what you'll take look, look at what you'll drag the family through or oh, look at you you're already depressed how could you possibly withstand a trial what's the matter with you why are you thinking that okay those are the people whose opinions you do not need to take into consideration if you choose to press charges it will be extremely helpful to have a team of supporters and advocates to accompany you through the process we don't recommend that you do it alone check in with your local rape crisis center your local domestic violence center um, sometimes they will have people on staff or on their volunteer staff that their whole job is to be your advocate and go with you through the process so look into that don't do it on your own um, I mean certainly if your only choice is to <laughs> if your only choice if you've decided you're gonna do this and your only choice is going it on alone or not doing it at all then we're not going to tell you not to do it but if you have the option to find supporters please do that even if you think right now off the top of your head I'm gonna be fine still have people available standing by if you choose to press charges it is important not to make your healing contingent upon a guilty verdict or a stiff sentence for your abuser that might not happen despite your testimony and the prosecutor's best efforts um, we never know how these things are going to go um, so much of it comes down to um, a jury person's interpretations um, a judge's opinion just so many different things are involved and you cannot count on there being either a guilty verdict or the sentence that you might like to see your abuser receive if they are found guilty and I think that you have a note in here about discussing codependency yes uh, so one of the most simple um, definitions of codependency is when your feelings depend upon something else that's outside of you so if you are weighing your feeling good or your healing contingent upon something else happening outside of you someone else's thoughts or feelings or actions towards you or w not even taking into consideration you at all then I want to encourage you to uh, really 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 not uh, not allow your day or your thoughts or your feelings like if you're gonna wake up and have a great day wake up and have a great day please don't allow that or I want to encourage you not to allow you having a good day to be based upon if someone else is having a good day or if you're healing like I'm doing so well in my recovery journey except somebody else is doing this to me somebody else is making me feel this way somebody else said these things and did these things and now I'm no longer going to be able to heal so we've had several several emails and messages and tweets and and posts and private messages and whatever regarding will we record a video on codependency and how to take steps towards being less codependent since if you are from an abusive environment you're listening to this podcast you're watching this video you're an adult survivor of child abuse or you know someone who is then chances are you have a higher propensity toward codependency you're, you've been predisposed that, that that's where you came from is from a codependent environment usually that's where domestic violence and abuse breeds it's like a petri dish so yes we are going to record an episode specifically for codependency and um, I want to uh, just encourage you to hold on until we record that episode or Google codependency or something so that you can experience healing and affirmation and goodness and health and everything that's good um, not dependent upon an outcome of a court hearing or someone else approving of what it is that you're doing or liking what you're doing or um, believing 
in you in, in your journey of deciding to report or what have you. Does that make sense, Bobby? Comment on that. Yep. Yep. It does make sense. Um, and we will definitely we'll talk about that some more. It's just it's so hard when you're brought up in a situation where codependency is rife. Are you still there, Athena? I am. I just need to turn off this little. Um, this is live, folks. I'm gonna turn this thing off over here. Sorry. <laughs> I wondered what was going off. Okay. Um, um, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, if you're raised in a codependency environment, it's very hard to break through from that, break free from that. I have had some people who've had some really good luck with Codependence Anonymous. Um, so that is an option. You can look that up online um, and see what they have to say. But um, I've just, I've had some people have some enormous growth and support and education from CODA. Uh, which stands for Codependence Anonymous. Yes, and then there's also, I don't want to discount Celebrate Recovery, Bobby. Celebrate Recovery is huge, and they're, um, they're a faith-based, and a lot of it started off with alcohol and drug dependency, but they have actually started having uh, a, a weekly meeting at certain faith-based organizations regarding codependency. Yes, they do wrap in multiple different kinds of topics um, yeah. or issues. I know, like you said, it started out as alcohol and drug, but now they they talk about a lot of different things. Yeah. Um, so those are two good resources until we get our video put out. Um, if you really have some questions or thoughts, those would be good resources to look at online. Um, and the last bullet point here is to set and maintain strong boundaries between yourself and those who do not agree with your decision to press charges whether you choose to do so or not so if you decide you don't want to press charges and you have some family members that are um, vehemently against your doing that and they're upset set healthy boundaries if you decide to press charges and people are, what's the matter with you? Why are you rocking the boat? How can you bring so much shame upon our family? Set your healthy boundaries. And I just want to remind you that we do have an episode and a one page available about healthy boundaries. And that's from season one this season, so it's not going to go behind the paywall. It will always be available to you. So um, it's going to be on YouTube and Roku until they disintegrate into dust. <laughs> yeah, um, which I don't think they will. I think that they'll be around for for evers and evers. I, I mean, I would hope so. I don't know that there's anything going on with our Roku channel or YouTube or anything like that where they would. Um, although I have heard of people's YouTube videos like getting taken away or shut down, like people's YouTube channels getting shut down. Is that true, Bobby? I heard that like last week. I have not heard that one. Oh my goodness! There's some sort of episode or some sort of um, article. Pardon me about that oh. and. Yeah, so I hope that that's not the case, but yes, we will, um, anything from episode one, you guys, this is always going to be available, it's a wealth of information to you guys, um, we will have, um, I'm going to have Harriet um, set up for um, episodes on Roku TV, I think, I think if you have a Roku device, you'll be able to access them for like 99 cents a download or something like that, I'm not really 100% sure yet. But um, otherwise, for fourteen ninety seven or fourteen ninety five or fourteen ninety nine, I can't remember what it is now per month. You'll have unlimited access to every single resource that we put out. That is a complimentary resource. That is not a course or a book or an event or whatever. And you get discounts on everything else if you are a um, one of the founding members. So um, definitely get on that mailing list. Yeah. Yes. Sign up before September 1st, pretty please, with sugar on top. So, yes. um, and refer all of your survivor friends and family members and people that are supporting survivors. Um, or we even have someone from a university, we got picked up by a university and they're using us as supplemental information for survivors and their family members. So, if that is something that you have a wide reach into the uh, education system, or I know that one of our 
members is um, a student at Johns Hopkins. Um, just, you know, anybody you can think of that would benefit from this. I mean, we obviously want to spread it to the far ends of the earth. So uh, we want people to feel supported and encouraged in their recovery journey and not um, inhibited and prohibited from healing. So, you know, they've gone through enough and they've struggled with healing enough in their whole life and we want them to feel, we want you and them to feel supported. So um, please share, please share. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um um, so that's the end of the one page. The tail end just said, you know, have faith in the decision that you make and get the support that you need and know that we will never sit in judgment um, what you do, what you decide to do, that we have faith that your decision is what's right for you. Um, so there you go. Anything else that you have to add, Ms. Athena, before um. I put up the... I don't think Contact so. Contact information? Um, well, I'm glad that a few of our peeps had some supportive family members. And uh, that's awesome, Maya. And, oh, and Tiffany says I'm hilarious, and Jack says I look really tan. Okay, so I went camping. Okay, this is just a side note, and we're two minutes over. My apologies. I went camping at a volcano and it was at 10,000 feet, and it was 40 flipping degrees, and it was cold. Matt, it was perfect for you, because I know you would have loved it. Because um, it was cold, and with the wind chill, it was like under 30 degrees. It was crazy. However, the sun, there was not a cloud in the sky. The sun was beating down, and I did not have a lot of sunscreen on. So I am a little bit sunburned, and I tried to sort of cover it up so it wouldn't look red and burned, that it would look a little tan. But so thanks for saying I look tan. I think because normally I'm a little pasty. I that was more sun than I've had in two years because I normally try to stay out of the sun because I have major skin issues because of childhood situations that we have discussed on previous episodes. So we love you, beautiful. And having come, yes, having come from Washington State and through the eruption of Mount St. Helens, I just want to know. Why would you be on a volcano? Um, <laughs> I wanted. I had this vision of going up to the volcano and throwing your husband in. No, no. We normally go like we normally hike around and wear beanies and coats and flannels and take pictures and and go on nature walks and we bring ice chests filled with, you know, all kinds of like fun sandwich food and all that. Anyway, we normally have a really, really great time. And normally it's not blazing hot. And normally the wind isn't 50 miles an hour. So, and normally the, we are not surrounded by 19 tenths of other people and families and babies and dogs and things and screaming and yelling and whatever. I met a few very, very awesome people, photographer from Washington State, some retired uh, school teachers from... I think Some they said. Else? I think they said Washington as well. Although I'm not sure they're over on Molokai right now. Um, Bill and Jenny. So anyway, met some awesome people. They were really, really great. But it was just a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of sunshine and a lot of wind. Normally, super awesome, beautiful. Bobby, I texted you that picture of the inside of the crater, yes, you did. and it, it was absolutely gorgeous. I thought it was gorgeous. Yes. Is it active? Yes, it's on. Oh, there you go. Oh, no, it's a dormant. It's a dormant volcano. Sorry. Oh, I, thought you okay. meant, I thought you meant it was the sheet up. I'm like, no, I see the sheet. It's awesome. <laughs> no, I, I'm just a little uh, volcano shy. <laughs> okay. So the best ways to connect with us. Um, email. Bobby L. Parrish at gmail.com, Athena at athenamoberg.com, no more shame project at gmail.com. Connect with us on Twitter. I am Truth is Hers. Athena is Athena Moberg. And then there's Trauma Recovery University, which is Trauma Recovery U. Um, on Facebook, we have a Trauma Recovery University page. I have my personal page, Bobby Parrish, and my business page, Bobby Parrish Coaching and Consulting. Athena has her personal page, which is Dawn. Athena Moberg, and her professional page, which is Athena Moberg fan page. Uh, look us up on YouTube, Trauma Recovery University, Roku TV, Trauma Recovery University, Google Plus, Trauma Recovery University. Yay! 
Yay. And always use the hashtag no more shame when you're communicating with us because I monitor the no more shame hashtag. Even though it's not always only us, there's this one gal that does sexy in her skivvies and she uses the hashtag no more shame. I saw that. Like I've been well, seeing it for the past couple of weeks. Sexy in her skivvies. Hashtag no more shame. But usually it's us, sex abused folk, that want to just shed the shame of our childhood sexual abuse and reach out to other survivors and provide much needed support. Yeah, unfortunately we can't do anything about people who use hashtag appropriately. But <laughs> so you're warned. I would not want, I'm sorry, but wait, before you put that up, I just have to say this. I would not want anyone <laughs> to see me sexy in my skivvies. <laughs> yeah. Okay, 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 go. I just wouldn't, I just cannot, I, I would not, I would not want that. I would not be posting pictures of that. <laughs> okay. Well, for some reason, <laughs> I can't get the other. Um, what? I'm just kidding. The I'm other totally one kidding. to come up, but um, again, it's uh, it's talking to you about the different ways to connect with us in How terms of our live community. free event. I know. For some reason, I can't get the screen share to come up. So, um, first Twitter chat. Of, no, no, it just is not coming up on my screen share options. Okay. Not even an option to share it. So. Stop trying to fuss with me. Um, not you, but that's what my computer. So, <laughs> 10 o'clock in the morning, Pacific time, um, 6 p.m. British time, GMT, is the first Twitter chat of the week, and the hashtag is CSUT, Child Sexual Abuse Question Time. And then here we are, live on Mondays, with our combination of a Twitter chat and video cast, and that is Monday nights at CM for Pacific Standard Time and 2 o'clock in the morning for stalwart UK fans or those who can't sleep and I'm sorry you can't sleep. Um, then the last Twitter chat of the week is Tuesday evenings at 6 p.m. Standard Time at 2 o'clock Wednesday morning in the UK and the hashtag is sex abuse. Um, we have multiple Facebook support groups, secret support groups. If you would like to join them, please friend us on Facebook and send us a message. And please don't be interested if we ask you some questions because we do need to make sure that you are a survivor before we let you into one of the groups. Um, the safety and security of our members is paramount. And uh, we just don't let people in willy-nilly. We don't no. do anything willy-nilly. No, and we vet, we vet really the people. people. No. <coughs> Excuse me. We vet the people that come into our groups very, very carefully. And I mean, unless we've had like multiple interactions with you, we understand and you've already been a part of our community. But um, I just want to, um, actually, I wanted to ask Bobby next hey. week, I, I believe next week we are talking about, um, <clears throat> I'm blanking. I, I, I don't think we've had scheduled any, okay, to be honest. I, okay, awesome. So, so when you're we, not blanking. When we figure out what's on our editorial calendar for next week, we'll send out some tweets and we'll post in our private secret Facebook groups. And if you would like to be a part of our private secret Facebook groups, our secret um, community online for support. I know we got a message from someone um, previously regarding um, – we got an email message regarding online support. Now, Bobby does, she has a special going on for some coaching right now that's only for members of our private secret Facebook group. So if you are wanting some one-on-one -on -one coaching with an awesome trauma recovery coach and you just need to get over the hump and, and work through something that you're, that you're going through right now, there is no shame in that. It doesn't matter how long you've been on your recovery journey. If you would like some extra support of someone that really gets it and really cares, then send us a message. Ask to be a member of one of our of, of the private secret Facebook group that we're talking about right now that Bobby and I actually host. And then we have other ones as well. Don't be shy. Reach out. We absolutely, um, we just love you guys. And you're the reason that we're here every single week. And we Mondays are our favorite days of the week because we get to show up here with you every single week. So um, I put out... Um, I put out private videos that are only available, only available to our private group members, 
And again, it's going to be free forever if you get in there before September 1st. So I do put out a private video every single week, and it's only for our group members. So, um, and Bobby has coaching specials, and I have specials as well. So anyway, take advantage of these resources that are at your fingertips so that you can experience the support that you need in your recovery journey. And remember, we are just here to support you. We want you to know that we support your decisions 100%, whatever they may be. So um, any, any parting thoughts? Any closing thoughts, Bobby? No, um, I think that we've said everything that um, we came here to say and probably more. <laughs> <laughs> so, we had some laughs, um, some laughs along the way. Yes. And, um, you know, I know it's a difficult topic, so um, we do have a little, a few moments of levity um, because otherwise uh, we would just sit here and weep in front of you every week after week after week, and that's just no fun. I don't think I think we'd lose our audience after a while. So yeah, we only have a we only have a couple of haters that want to say, "Oh, this is, should be more more of a serious topic." How dare you? But. Anyway, that they're not our audience, obviously. That this is our channel, and it's not their channel, so they don't get to say that we need to sit here and drone on with no personality. So, <laughs> so get on the email list so you know about the virtual event held on the 29th of August, and so that you get in as one of our charter members of uh, Trauma University. So yeah. encourage your therapists to get on the email list too. They're going to have access to all the information, and it won't ever cost them anything. Yeah, it's a so. great resource for any helping professional that you happen to know, whether it's a social worker or a trauma, someone that's in trauma recovery, or like Bobby was saying, a therapist or a counselor. And we've had several people um, reach out to us and ask if they can use our our downloadable resources as supplements to the care that they're already providing. So. Um, until next week, thank you so much for joining us at Trauma Recovery University, where we, myself, Athena Moberg, and my amazing partner, Bobby Parrish, do everything we possibly can to provide you with the resources you need for healthy, informed trauma recovery. Aloha. Good night, everybody. Good night.